Hello guys, this is Amol Khedkar. I welcome you to this video. Today I'm going to talk about the Big Mac index. Uh, you might have heard about it. Many people don't know about it. It is a very uh, unique concept that is related to economics. So, you know, you might be seeing a picture of a burger on your screen right now. But uh, yeah, this is a title related to economics and macroeconomics, to be honest. And uh, but this is a very important topic, which uh, really compares the actual cost of living between two countries. Uh, you know, I have seen many people just keep on saying that, uh, uh, you know, when, when you are working in a foreign country, like say Canada or America, you are literally earning in dollars. So you are, you know, printing money as such. So that's not the case, to be honest with you. I have made many videos on this channel. Uh, I have a playlist on this channel called This is America. You can go and check that playlist out and you will understand what I mean. So this is what a Big Mac index is all about. Uh, so if you can, uh, you know, read this properly, uh, I have zoomed it a bit. So the Big Mac index, uh, as you can see here, how many burgers you get for 50 US dollars in each of these countries. So for 50 uh, US dollars, how many burgers you can get uh, in every of these countries? Uh, I will just go through each of them. In India, you can get 30 burgers, 3 zero, for 50 US dollars. In Malaysia, you can get 21. Then in Ukraine, Hong Kong, you can get 23. In China, South Africa, Indonesia, Thailand, Taiwan, you can get 20 burgers, McDonald's burgers. In uh, Russia, Sri Lanka, Egypt, Poland, Hungary, you can get 19. Then there are many other countries here. Now we will just, uh, uh, you know, see where the major countries stand. So now we come to USA, you can get 11 uh, Big Mac burgers uh, for 50 US dollars in America. In Canada, you can get 10. Australia also you can get 10. Uh, so if you if you can understand how this works, uh, definitely Canada is expensive than America. As you can see here in America, you can get 11 burgers for $50. In Canada, you can get 10 burgers. Even in Australia, you can get 10 burgers. So Australia is in fact much more expensive than Canada and America because that exact same burger costs much more in Australia than uh, it does in Canada or in America. Then you have Denmark which is really very expensive all the nordic countries all the northern european countries are very very expensive so definitely you can see you can just get nine burgers in denmark then there is sweden brazil uh, then there is norway and switzerland so uh, you know norway and switzerland these two countries you will literally get just seven burgers in these two countries for 50 us dollars so the big mac index is published by the economist there is a very a reputed magazine called the Economist and it published the Big Mac index as an informal way of measuring the purchasing power parity PPP between two currencies and provides a test of the extent to which market exchange rates result in goods costing the same in different countries. Don't get confused by the high fundu language here but all it means is that you know how much uh, does a currency uh, have purchasing power. So how good is the currency for purchasing a few things in that country? Uh, so if you're earning with dollars in America, then obviously you're even spending in dollars, right? I mean, it's not like you are earning in dollars and then you're spending in say, you know, a very undervalued currency, like say Argentine peso or something like that. It's not like that. So definitely what this means is that, um, you know, purchasing power parity economy rankings really matter. So I have been a vocal proponent of comparing countries by PPP rankings, the GDP PPP rankings and not by the nominal rankings because nominal rankings really distort all the equations. And so purchasing power parity is really the thing that you should all be concerned about. And so I have a video on my channel where I say that India is already the, you know, the third largest economy in the world. So if you compare India's economy in terms of PPP, like GDP PPP, India is already way ahead of many other countries. So uh, the Big Mac index is just another way of measuring the purchasing power parity and uh, it seeks to make exchange rate theory a bit more digestible. So yeah, uh, this was introduced by The Economist and um, you know, um, it just explains things in a manner that people can understand because you know, people can relate to this fact much more easily that you can buy say 30 burgers in India for 50 US dollars and uh, with the same 50 US dollars, you can buy just 11 burgers in America and just 10 burgers in Canada and Australia. So what this tells you is that India is a, a very, you know, uh, the cost of living is very cheap in India. And the cost of living in say Nordic countries or say Canada, Australia, Sweden, Denmark, Norway, Switzerland, they are, they are very high. 
that's what this tells you and so this is in a language that normal people can understand and so big mac index is uh, really introduced so that uh, you know you don't have to be an economist to understand something like this so the index created in 1986 takes its name from the big mac a hamburger sold at mcdonald's restaurants so if you know uh, there is a hamburger called big mac at mcdonald's that you can get and uh, you know this index just compares the price of a big mac in different countries so how does it do that the big mac index was introduced in the economist in september 1986 by pam woodall as a semi humorous illustration of ppp and has been published by that paper annually since then the index also gave rise to the world burgeronomics so this yeah this this came off as like a semi humorous illustration but uh, now it is used by many worldwide economists to uh, you know just explain the fact of purchasing power parity and and you know this is a very important thing and uh, people really don't get it uh, very easily because uh, you know i've been living outside of india for the past 10 years now but i have heard people say that you are earning in dollars you are you know how much is your salary in indian rupees you know it doesn't work that way to be very honest with you uh, when you are earning in dollars you are paying in dollars right you are literally spending in dollars as well so it's not that plain and simple that you know you just convert the um you know the salary that you're making in america into you know using the conversion rate and then say that you know this is your salary in india it definitely is not that simple it has many many pros and it has many many the like, gray shades to it and that's why ppp ranking is a very important ranking and you know the big mac index is something that explains ppp in a very uh, you know humorous sort of term so one suggested method of predicting exchange rate movements is that the rate between two currencies should naturally adjust so that the sample basket of goods and services should cause the same in both currencies so this is also a very important statement uh, you know if you don't understand it and if you are not an economist or don't bother about it we'll go ahead in the big mac index the basket is in question is a single big mac burger as sold by the mcdonald's fast food restaurant chain chain so you know in this case in the big mac index the basket of uh, goods and services that are used to compare the ppp uh, indices that is just a big mac burger so they are, they are just comparing a big mac burger in different countries and telling you how exactly the prices change the big mac was chosen because it is available to a common specification in many countries around the world as local mcdonald's franchisees at least in theory have significant responsibility for negotiating input prices for these reasons the index enables a comparison between many countries currencies the big mac ppp exchange rate between two currencies is obtained by dividing the price of a big mac in one country by the price of a big mac in another country this value is then compared with the actual exchange rate if it is lower then the first currency is undervalued compared with the second and conversely if it is higher then the first currency is overvalued so yeah this all just boils down to uh, how much you can purchase with the money that you are making in that country so uh, you know uh, if you are earning say you know 100000 in america but you are living in california which is one which is one of the very expensive uh, places to live and you are living in silicon valley like where, where literally like one bhk apartment uh, rent is just 2500 no kidding these are the actual rents so 2500 for one bhk apartment in silicon valley so you know your salary of 100000 is just nothing to be very honest with you because the cost of living is very high so now if you if you are getting 100000 dollars while you are working in india then that's a different story then definitely i can agree with you that you know you are getting very high salary but when you are living in um, a very high costly environment you are you are living in a you know uh, like a first world country and when you compare that exact salary with indian rupees or say other other currency then i don't think that's a fair comparison it is definitely not that plain and simple and people really need to understand this and i've seen many people just say this you know they just compare the uh, you know the currency uh, you know in a very crude fashion and uh, that just uh, gives very uh, construed uh, perception of what exactly life is in foreign countries so if you're watching this video from india you might have uh, also heard many times that you know people just say that you know uh, when they are working outside of india they are literally earning in dollars and so you know they don't have anything to worry about it's not that simple all right just look at what the current situation right now i have made a video about the vande bharat mission go and watch that and you will understand you know uh, the indian government is literally charging three times the amount for people to come back to india and many people literally cannot afford that so if you ask yourself if these people are earning so high then why aren't they able to afford that because you know that high salary is also used for many other things like rent for uh, 
you know a daily expenses for many other things and those other things are very costly it's not that easy to uh, you know live in other part of the world and uh, you know many people who uh, have not even left the city uh, you know try to judge others by saying that you know you are earning so much uh, rupees and so and, and you know you are literally just printing dollars so why not why are you so concerned about money you know i really wanted to you know just dismantle that perception and that's why i'm making this video uh so there are many variants of the big mac index as well so there's the there's the tall latte index which is uh, you know which is uh, if you don't know what tall latte is it's like a starbucks coffee uh, and that it just compares the starbucks coffee in different countries there's also an ipod index which just compares ipod prices in different countries and uh, now you can see here there is a ikea index gold mac index which just compares the gold prices then uh, there are many of these indices which just compare different things in uh, different countries to give you to give you an idea of how exactly you know uh, things shape up in those countries so uh, you know uh, i will just give you uh, Uh, raw figures about where exactly it is most expensive and where exactly it is least expensive so the six most expensive countries in the entire world according to the big mac index are switzerland where a big mac burger can cost you literally 6.57 dollars all figures are in us dollars which is a 6.50 chf which is the, you know the uh, the local currency in switzerland then you have sweden which is 5.83 just look at the difference switzerland is so expensive 6.57 and 5.83 almost you know 70 cents of difference uh, which is 51 sek the swedish krona uh, in sweden then us which is 5.51 usd and so it is exactly the same one 5.51 usd so switzerland and sweden are definitely costlier countries than america no doubt about that norway 5.22 canada 5.08 and euro area 4.75 then you have six cheapest you have egypt 1.75 ukraine 1.91 russia 2.29 malaysia indonesia and taiwan uh, now these are the cheap uh, we have seen the six most expensive six cheapest and six fastest earned what does it mean that you know it shows the average working time required to buy one big mac in selected cities around the world so how much time you have to work to buy one big mac in hong kong it's just 8.6 minutes so hong kong is you know uh, it you can make uh, money very easily in hong kong then in luxembourg 10.3 minutes japan in tokyo 10.4 minutes switzerland in zurich 10.6 minutes miami in the us 10.7 minutes and genoa in switzerland 10.8 minutes six lowest earned so these are all the countries in africa or say you know southeast asia which are not that developed that's why you know you have to work for long time to uh, make money that is equivalent to like a big mac so in kenya in uh, nairobi in kenya you literally have to work for 172.6 minutes to afford a big mac burger then you have manila in philippines mexico city in mexico jakarta in indonesia cairo in egypt and kiev in ukraine so you know uh, i really wanted to uh, you know get this out there because i have seen many people just compare raw salaries and raw um, ways of earning money and they just don't take into account the nuances into it because there are a lot of factors that go into it and uh, many people are not aware of that and the people who have not even left the city let alone the country uh, feel that they are you know very uh, adept and they are expert in commenting on the um, you know the the purchasing powers of other uh, people and other countries so you know i i am just pretty amazed by that but yeah many people in india or in other parts of the world might have that perception that uh, you know when you are working in a foreign country you are literally you know uh, earning a very huge salary you are you know living a very lavish lifestyle it's not like that uh, it is definitely nowhere even close to that so uh, please bear that in mind and i have literally an entire playlist on my channel where i tell you that you know uh, stop going uh, to study abroad from india i've analyzed many different countries including australia canada uh, new zealand uh, europe america go and watch that playlist and you will understand why i am saying all these things so i'll stop talking here if you liked my analysis of this article please don't forget to uh, like comment share and subscribe to this channel for more videos like these thank you have a good day bye bye